Hey everyone, it's Dan Sfera coming back to you from dansfera.com. You'll see it on the bottom of the screen here. It's D A N S like Sam, F like Frank, E R A. I'm interviewing Yo Jovan Buha. He is a blogger, he's a journalism student at USC, and he does a lot of uh, uh, guest articles and he interns for several different organizations, which I'll let him get into. But the most important thing is that he's an expert on the Clippers, and he's a person who wants to have a career in journalism. And so for those of you entrepreneurs out there, those of you guys maybe that have a blog and are interested in learning how or what the future of journalism is, we can learn from someone who's in that same position. Um, and then we'll get into a lot of questions regarding the Clippers and Jovan and what he does right now and, and, and how that helps him uh, maybe find a job one day or, or does he already have a job? Um, those are questions even I don't know because we just met five minutes ago. Um, so Jovan, welcome to the show. I'm glad you're here. Thanks um, for having me, Dan. Now tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, and uh, some of the organizations you're involved with. Um, well, I'm a sophomore at USC majoring in print and digital journalism, and uh, my passion in life is basketball. Uh, I'm about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, which would be about a shooting guard size. Wow, you're but, uh, <laughs> Yeah, so, but, you know, I, I realized I wasn't going to play basketball. Uh, I wasn't good <laughs> enough to make the NBA, so I kind of decided I want to get into, uh, into journalism. I mean, I've always been uh, obsessed with statistics and, and numbers and, you know, why... Uh, you know, this player worked on this team and why uh, he didn't work on another team and, you know, so on and so forth. So about, uh, I actually didn't pick up journalism until <clears throat> my senior year in high school. Um, I, took a, I took a journalism class and I uh, wrote for the school paper. Mm. And, um, and then I applied uh, to USC originally for, originally for print. Uh, I got in, I switched to broadcast uh, right. Because I, I kind of wanted to go the TV route, mm -hmm. but um, after you know thinking about experiencing it, I, I really like writing, uh, so I switched back to print, and you know now I'm here. I've uh, you know I've been really um, involved with stuff at USC. I have a, a radio show on a uh, KXSC radio, which is USC's uh, student-run radio station. Uh, I did last year ATVN, which is the the TV station uh, USC. Um, I'm the associate editor for uh, USC's online site, uh, Neon Tommy, which is the, you know, it has the most views of any uh, uh, student-run publication in the country. Um, and then, you know, earlier this year, I, I, I got more serious and, you know, just worked on my writing and, uh, you know, really paid attention to, you know, the details and stuff. And, um... You know, luckily I got uh, you know an opportunity with Clipper Blog um, from you know True Hoop uh, mm -hmm. in May, and uh, you know that's just that's opened a lot of doors for me. Uh, I got to uh, start contributing to Slam online. Mm -hmm. uh, now I'm an intern at Grantland.com, uh, Bill Simmons' uh, new site that started up over summer, and mm -hmm. uh, you know I just things have been going well. Very uh, good. Recently. So you've you've been keeping yourself busy, and you're a you're yeah. a sophomore, yeah. at USC. Okay. Now, uh, the thing with the Clippers, how did that originate? Were you just a fan, and so since you were a student majoring in journalism, you reached out to them, or do they have a program for interns? How how did that come about? Um. Well, actually, uh, the first my first ever game at Staples Center was a Clippers game. And that would probably be probably oh one oh two. Um so I was about, you know, uh, eight or nine then. Uh <laughs> um and uh you know I've I've been to a lot of Clipper games. Um, you know, I've I've always, you know, been a fan of the team back when they had, you know, Darius Miles, Quinn yeah, Richardson doing yeah. this. What was that all about? <laughs> uh have you ever I, found out? Use your journalistic uh expertise to find out what that was well about. you know Quinn Richardson's in Orlando right now so he I, I don't know how accessible he is and I have no idea where Darius Miles is but he got arrested that, that, at an airport recently. yeah so uh, 
I mean, I, he, he's he could be you know just I don't I don't know where he is. Yeah, um, no, I, I saw that on the news, but yeah, I always wonder what that whole thing was about, and they never revealed it to anyone. I mean, I mean, people have stuff that they do with their friends, you know, different mm-hmm. handshakes, different ways to greet them. I think you know, I could have been something like that, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, I just uh, my friend who writes for uh, the Nets blog, Nets are scorching on True Hoop. Um, you know, he told me that there was an opening and, uh, I applied and, you know, they just said, you know, you know, uh, we like your, you know, we like your work. We, uh, we like your resume, but you know, we want you to write a piece for the site Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, depending on how that goes, like, we'll, you know, let you on, uh, if you want to be a staff writer or not. And, uh, you know, I, I sent in a piece and I, you know, it, it was really weird because, I felt a lot of pressure, you know, to to do a good job because, um, you know, it's it's kind of you know a scary situation. You know, if I if I don't write something good, you know, I'm not I'm not going to get this opportunity. So, I wrote I wrote a pretty long piece, and they actually said that I had I had tried to you know combine so many ideas that they wanted me to spread it out over a few pieces. But but they like my work and um, you know they brought me on and since then you know uh, I covered the draft, uh, which was pretty cool. I got to go to the Clippers practice facility um, in Playa Vista, and uh, I was I was there with you know uh, it was weird. I was there with like L.A. Times reporters, uh, you know, guy people that have been covering the team for years, and uh, you know was, I've been covering the team, uh, I guess professionally for a month and uh it was a pretty cool experience now when you go um clipper blog which is owned by true hoop uh true hoop is the parent company uh that owns these so they have different blogs in different nba cities um how does that work the the whole true hoop thing well actually um clipper blog was started by kevin arnovitz Okay. In 2006, I believe. Okay. And he kind of just started it as, um, you know, just a way to, you know, discuss basketball and look at it from, you know, the thinking fans' perspective. Okay. And, um, you know, I think, I believe if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, True Hoop, True, well, True Hoop was started by Henry Abbott, obviously, uh, but it didn't join ESPN until 2007, I think. Um, which was when kind of they had a partnership that you know the blog was going to be on ESPN. Oh, okay, so ESPN. Uh, so who founded True Hoop? Because I'm taking notes here. H- Henry Abbott. Okay. So he he has his own blog uh, like called True Hoop on okay. ESPN. Oh. And okay. uh, and then in 2009, uh, True Hoop branched out to have. Um, a team blog for every team. Mm-hmm. Okay. So okay. now, all, so all thirty teams, and some of the blog, some of the blogs were created for True Hoop, as in, you know, they didn't have any, they didn't, there weren't any other team blogs that they kind of were interested in. So right. someone started them, uh-huh. but most of the blogs actually already existed, but they were brought onto the True Hoop network, well, like Clipper Blog. Like Clipper Blog was blog. exactly I get it. so. Um, and Ke- Kevin's also one of the editors for True Hoop. True. Oh, okay. Know. Very interesting. And it makes sense. Um, and as far as the business arrangements between each blog, you, you're you not familiar with uh, how they structure that? Or do you have some kind of idea how, of how it uh, works? Uh, every, I think every blog's different. But, um, you know, most, pretty much every blog has a, kind of like a founder um, or co founders. Um, and then, you know, most of them, I mean, some have one guy who writes most of the stuff. Some got, some have like five or six. Uh, you know, it really depends on, really depends on the blog. Right. Like if it's the Lakers, I mean, I'm sure they can find enough writers uh, yeah. to cover the Lakers or the Celtics. But they, they actually have only, I mean, they have, they have one, one guy covered it for most of the season, uh, Darius Soriano, but, you know, they have another, a couple other guys um, mm. Very doing good. A lot more work recently. So your involvement with the Clipper blog is a contributor, or are you? Uh... Um, I, I mean, it's it hasn't really been. 
established, but I guess I'd say I'm a staff writer. Oh, okay. uh, cause for, for most of the se- uh, summer I did like, I, I did a lot of work and was posting like almost every day. Um, this thing called found objects, mm-hmm. which is, uh, you know, I find clipper related news and, uh, whatnot and kind of combine it into links and stuff. But I have written, uh, you know, uh, f- quite a few pieces for them as well. So. Interesting. And we're, we're going to get back to the whole business behind journalism and why you want to get involved and then how you plan to monetize your, yourself and, and your own skills. Uh, let's talk about uh, the Clippers, or specifically the NBA. What do you know about the lockout since that's a top story these days? What's going on uh, with that? Uh, they, this is really... It's a murky situation. I mean, there, there's so many reports uh, that you, you really don't know, you know, what's true, what's not. Um, you know, every second someone's changing their mind. Um, I mean, it, it's not looking good, in my opinion. Uh, you know, David Stern said if, you know, if by Monday, if they don't, uh, you know, reach an agreement, that part of the season will be missed. And... You know that's not that's not something I'm looking forward to. That's not something I'm sure you're looking forward. To. I mean, that's no one wants that. Right. Um, but if, if I had to if I had to make a prediction, I think um, we're gonna miss games. I think it'll be a shortened season, uh, similar to the '98 '99 uh, season that was 50 games. Maybe it might be a little longer. I'm not sure. Um, but there's so many issues they have to figure out. Um, I think the biggest one is the Currently, uh, the BRI, which is the basketball-related uh, income, uh, players get 57% of it. Owners get 43%. The owners want to flip that and you know have the players be earning in the mid-40s uh, percentage-wise. Right. Uh, but the players will not agree to that. Uh, the owners kind of changed their stance and said, let's split it 50-50. The players won't agree to that either. They want it hmm. 51, 52, 53 uh, in okay. favor of the players, so I think that's the biggest issue. Just kind of um, figuring out how the basketball-related income is going to be distributed between the two sides. Now, what exactly is basketball-related income? Is that jersey sales, or is that just like TV deals? Uh, yeah, it's. I mean, I, I guess it. It's all that. It's all that stuff. It's pretty much all the money that um, that the league makes, and. You know, a big misconception that a lot of people have is, you know, they sign player, uh, team sign players to really bad contracts, Mm -hmm. but the team has to spend 57% of its money on players. So, at at the minimum. So, it's like these teams have, the money has to go somewhere. Now, a lot of people think superstars should be making more money, uh, you know, such as Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, that they should be, you know, that they're currently. Kobe's in the mid twenties, uh, and uh, Wade and LeBron had to take pay cuts to play Miami. Um, mm-hmm. But you know they're saying it should be seventy, eighty million. Um, so it, it's just I don't know. It's it's a really tough situation. But there's so many de- uh, issues with the money that it's it's become ridiculous. It's, you know. So teams have to spend fifty seven percent of the income on salary on salaries. Yeah, and. So that that's you know as I was saying I mean the money has to go somewhere so if they're not going to be paying the superstars that money then they're going to have to be paying overpaying role players who you know if they get injured or mm. you know just mentally aren't there you know some other reason then they're going to start playing bad and they're going to have these albatross contracts Now does that include the 57% uh does that include just players or does that include like uh the GMs and the scouts um, no, that that's players. Oh, only players. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, now, with your involvement with the Clipper blog, uh, do you get access to locker rooms and things like that? Just like the LA Times, for instance. Um. Yes and no. Uh. Now the 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 cool thing about Troop and uh, Clipper blog is that you don't have to live in the city to write and cover the team. Oh, okay. Um, so we have, a few, uh, we have a few writers who, you know, one lives in New York, uh, one's from Alabama. So they obviously can't go to the games. But 
um, uh, uh, the person, uh, Breen Murphy, who, who covered the team primarily last year, he had uh, access to every game and he had credentials to every game. So he could go uh, you know, to all 41 home games and um, you know, go to the press releases and you know, all that stuff. So I'm not sure what my um, situation will be this year. I mean, I live 20 blocks away from Staples Center. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, e- probably even less than that. So, I mean, I, I'd love to go to the Clipper uh, right, as right. many Clipper games as I could, but I think it's just really going to be um, a matter of access and uh, how many credentials they give out to Clipper Blog. To Clipper Blog. And you brought up something interesting. So, for the Clipper Blog, you have someone in Alabama writing for them, right? Uh, I would guess that he's. Not necessarily a Clipper fan, but he's a good writer. Or am I wrong? He's he's actually a Clipper fan. Okay, so that leads into my next question. Do they hire people who are fans first and then good writers? Or do they hire good writers first? And if you're not a fan of the team, for instance, would you would they accept you as a writer for the Milwaukee Bucks? Uh, it's it's by writers, I'd say. Um, okay. Because... I think they care more about the content than because it's not it's not like overly biased where it's like you know Blake Griffin's the greatest player in the league. Okay. Uh, you know, I mean, I wouldn't say it's not biased at all like that. Um, so I, I'd say it's definitely writing over fanship. Um, right. Plus, one yeah. is easy to fake, and the other is yeah impossible. To I fake. mean, you could you could fake being a fan. You can't fake good writing. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. But in your case, you're you're both. You're a fan and a great writer. Yeah. So okay, that was my so that was the uh, question I had for the up and coming journalist. Is let's say I was in college and uh, I'm a great writer and I'm a fan of the Clippers, but they're not they're not in need of new writers. But the Milwaukee Bucks are. Uh, should I apply to their blog? And I guess the answer is yes, because good writing is what matters uh, more than necessarily being a fanatic. I think uh, just experience too, because within the past few months, I, I've written so much that I think just naturally I've gotten better. Mm-hmm. And you know that'd be my advice to anybody wanting to make it um, in the journalism or you know writing business that you just got to write. Um, I mean, I look at stuff I wrote six, seven, eight months ago. I'm just like, what what was I thinking? And I'm sure in another six, seven, eight months, I'm going to look at the stuff I'm writing now and be like. I can't believe I wrote that. And right. I think it's just you know a natural progression that the more you write, the better you get. All right. So now you're a sophomore. As we wrap up, because I know you got to go. Um, as a sophomore in college, what are where do you see the, I guess the industry, your industry, the content industry, specifically sports content? Do you want to be a uh, basketball writer? Yes. Uh, okay. So you you're not into any other sports. Uh, um. I I mean I am to a degree but I kind of almost believe in like specialization that you know if I'm going to be focusing and reading the news I I want to put all my attention into basketball oh, okay um just so I can know more like know more information mm-hmm. and you know be smarter than the average person than you know the not average person that studies it every day mm-hmm. and um you know, so while I do keep up with football and baseball and uh, other sports, I primarily focus just on basketball because that's my favorite sport. That's what I want to do, and you know, that's that's what I'm going to focus on. And it used to be that journalism majors, um, someone in your, in your in your position, um, even ten years ago, they would have loved to have been uh, writers for the L.A. Times. Um, that's changed a lot, right? I mean, do you would you ever write for a newspaper, or are you totally like for the internet now? I, I would write. No, I, I would write for a newspaper. Um, I mean, it, it's going to be interesting to see where where journalism goes over the next ten to fifteen years. Mm-hmm. Um, we could see newspapers altogether, um, you know, be done with, right? <laughs> uh, right. So to speak. I mean, I think the New York Times uh, will likely always be around or, you know, right. probably outlast most newspapers. But, um, you know, if the L.A. Times offered me a job, I, I would take it. 
Um, but I think at the same time also, you're not going to see um, solely print-based uh, you know, news outlets. Uh, you know, the LA Times, I mean, every, pretty much every newspaper has a website with online content that they um, post more frequently than, you know, than they do with their newspapers. They have blogs. Uh, the LA Times has a Lakers blog. Um, you know, I, I hope yeah, they can make a Clippers blog. Right, right. Yeah, I hope they can make a Clippers blog for me. <laughs> See, I think, uh, I think the journalism or, you know, the industry that we're mm-hmm. in now, um, it's it used to be about the LA Times or the New York Times, and now it seems like it's more about the individuals, like they're superstar journalists. Right, like yeah. th- like those guys on around the horn or whatever. Uh, I mean, they can uh, write themselves yeah. a job anywhere, right? Yeah, um, I think I think we've seen that uh, more so now with you know with Twitter and Facebook and exactly. you know like you said around the horn. I mean, it really doesn't take that much to um, you know a- anyone. I mean, look look what we're doing. I mean, we're having a you know a video conversation over Skype. I mean, anybody can. Almost any. I mean, if you want to, you know, produce video content, you can do it. I think uh, the, everyone has so many options that there, there's so many choices of you know things you could do that you know it's really allowed certain people to stand out over others that have kind of been creative and ahead of the curve. Mm-hmm. Um, like, for example, uh, Bill Simmons. Um, you know, he he has a certain writing style that um, you know it's it's kind of funny. He has, uh, you know, he knows a lot about sports, but he also knows a lot about pop culture, and a lot of people out there try and emulate that, and they try and put that in their writing. But he just does it better than you know, ninety nine point nine percent of the people that are trying to write that style. Right. Um. So I mean, I think. I I, I mean, I think s- certain people have become superstars in journalism, so to speak. But it's also because they're better than everybody else. Yeah. I don't think right. it. I mean. Some people are more marketable, I would say. I don't think every writer can, um, you know, just step onto a TV set and, you know, talk in front of a camera. But, you know, those who can, there's a reason why they're where they are. And uh, are, are kind of related to that question as we wrap up, um, are we very close to a point in time where someone like the Clippers and someone like the Lakers will have an official team blog? I'm sure they already do, but I mean, an official one that could compete with like Yahoo Sports or like even compete with the Clipper blog that's run by True Hoop. And how much credibility can that actually have? Uh, what is what are your thoughts well, on that? Here, here's the thing. Um, the the Lake. I mean, the Lakers and Clippers have their official sites, and they have people who write for them. You know, each and every game, which uh, you can, I guess. I mean, you can you can qualify it as a blog, I'd say, but I I think the the one thing that's always gonna uh, I'd say stop teams from having their own actual blog is that um, you know for blogs you're you kind of try and approach things in the least biased way. Uh, I mean, some writers are obviously very biased and. But I mean, they'll they'll joke about it, and you know they won't, um, you know, you know they'll acknowledge that they're biased. But I think the thing the thing with uh, team sites is that you know you're not allowed to really criticize players. Um, uh-huh. You're not allowed to criticize plays. If you want to, you can use quotes from the coach or from another player to kind of yeah. imply that. Mm-hmm. But on Clipper Blog, I can say. Blake Griffin had a terrible game. You know, he took, uh, you know, he had five turnovers, and you know, this is what he did. You know, that made him have these turnovers, and he took ten bad shots. And, I got you. you know, so, so, you know, you can't do that. It's, um, you know, Blake Griffin had twenty five points and ten rebounds. Well, that could have been his worst twenty five point ten right. rebound game of his right, career. Right. But they don't say that. You know, so it's more, it's more newsy, I'd say, as far as you know, kind of strict. Um, structure and you know reporting the facts with no personal opinion while blogging is a lot more opinion I personally try and keep it as um, unbiased as I can 
But I mean, even there's sometimes when even I'll, but you know, I'll make a joke of it. I'll you know admit I don't like this player, or you know. Yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, so it's all so, about authenticity. I mean, I can't imagine an official team blog uh, criticizing ownership or management. Uh, you exactly. Know, exactly. I mean, that's a, that's. <laughs> I mean, we 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 like the Clippers. We we. We know some things about Vinny and Donald Sterling. I mean, yeah, I, I'm I not afraid to say that. <laughs> what? What? Uh, have you I, met Donald Sterling? No, I, he was actually at the. Um, he was at the draft. I didn't. Uh, you know, he was, he was speaking with someone, so I didn't interrupt and introduce oh, myself. Okay. So he doesn't really know who you are. He just kind of saw you there. I mean, I. From what I've heard, the you know the owners and the team executives and stuff they really follow. A lot of sports blogs, mm-hmm. uh, you know, pertaining to their team, mm-hmm. and you know, I've I've heard, um, you know, that they follow True Hoop and you know, look at stuff on True Hoop all the time. So, I mean, I don't know if he knows my face, but hopefully, he knows my writing. Very good. I yeah. Think. If you ever, if you ever get an exclusive, uh, I want details because I'm trying to buy the Clippers. I want to be the next owner. Uh, okay. So, so I got like um, twenty years to do that. I'm sure you'd make a lot better decisions as a Clippers. Oh, man. You see, the stuff, I interviewed Clipper O'Darrell uh, last weekend, and he was telling me that they, he said that Sterling gets this bad rap, but the things that he was doing even 10 years ago is what all the owners today are trying to do. That's why we're having the lock, uh, the lockout. So I, he I don't, must I don't have known criti- something. I don't criticize him as a businessman. Oh, okay. Um, oh, okay. I think as a businessman, I mean, his team – has pretty much been terrible from its existence, and he's still one of the owners making money. Yeah, he has a brilliant business plan. They're one of the most profitable teams in the league, from what I've heard. Yeah, and they won 32 games. I mean, <laughs> they, it's, uh, it, he knows how to make money. It's just putting a winning product, which is what... I mean, this is a whole other topic that I don't even want to get into. I mean, yeah. we don't have time to get into, but I, in my opinion, if you, if you own a sports team, you buy a sports team... You buy it to win. You don't buy it to, to, make money. to make money. I mean, if you're in it to make money, like, you know, go, there's other business, there's other business, you know, ventures you can, you know. Right. Um, you go buy some Pizza Hut. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but if, if you want to, you buy a sports team because you're rich, mm-hmm. you're really, really rich and you love sports and you want to win championships and put a competitive team. You don't buy a sports team, you know, to win 30, 35 games. <laughs> And to just make you know a lot of money. I mean, I just think that's that. Now, I, don't, I think that's selfish. Well, the, the very last question, as we end, uh, do you think he he got away with that because he's in LA and there's two teams here? Do you think he would have gotten away with that, like in San Diego or somewhere else, with the where he would be the only team in town? Well, I think. I mean, I I, I don't really know. Um, if, I mean, if that's the case, I, I would just say that he's kind of pushed the boundaries to the farthest it can go without, you know, crossing the line. <laughs> uh, I mean, I know a lot of, um, you know, a lot of writers and stuff have called for his head and said, you know, he should be taken out as owner. I mean, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd go that far, but I just really think that you know, for someone who has as much money as he da- has and, you know, makes as much money as he does off this team, I think there's times when players haven't been signed mm-hmm. uh, because they've been lowballed or, you know, players have been traded when they should have been kept. And I think you're kind of always seeing a Clipper roster shuffle, you know. I mean, I guess this group has stayed together for, you know, the past couple, you know, two, three years. But in general, you kind of always seeing you know, new Clipper teams yeah. and maybe they'll keep, you know, a couple players, but it's always almost a new roster, uh, every season. I mean, there's so many, I mean, you, you, you the, the most random players have been Clippers at times just yeah. because, you know, the Clippers bring in so many players and, uh, you know, I, I think that's just something that hopefully will be fixed with this team and we'll see a competitive young team grow up together and, Hopefully win championships. Well, within 20 years, I will buy them. I will move them to San Diego, and we won't have that problem. Now, uh, Jovan, um, if someone wants to get a hold of you, 
Um, and we're going to do other interviews, hopefully, as the season, if the season progresses. We'll, I'll catch up with you. We'll do another one of these. But if someone wants to get a hold of you, um, where can they reach you? Um, you could follow me on Twitter at, at Jovan Buha, J-O-V-A-N-B-U-H-A. And uh, if you want to email me, um, Jovan.Buha at gmail.com. Uh, once again, J O V A N dot B U H A at Gmail. And, uh, you know, check me out on uh, Clipper Blog. Um, check out grantland.com. And uh, check out Slam. And I also write for Hardwood Paroxysm, another True Hoop site. Okay. Um, so just, just check out True Hoop in general. I, mean, I will put links stuff. to those three at least your Twitter, your email, and the Clipper Blog, and the um, thank you. Grant Land, too. Yeah. And Yo- Yovan, thank you very much. I know you got to go, and um, we'll do it again sometime, all right? All right. Thanks for having me on, Dan. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. It's Dan Sfera from dansfera.com. Thanks a lot.